Let me introduce you Aida Martinez. She's a political scientist with a strong quantitative background. She obtained a joint degree in philosophy, politics, and economics by Universitat Pompeu Fabra, Universitat Carlos III de Madrid, and Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. She holds a master's degree in political analysis and institutional consulting at the Universitat de Barcelona, and also an expert degree in data analysis for political analysis and public management. She has worked in the public and private sector in the evaluation of programs and public policies, in the treatment, exploitation, visualization, and data analysis, and in the preparation of analysis reports based on quantitative and qualitative methods. She currently works as a data analyst at the Office of the Catalan University Basic Income Pilot Plan, and she regularly contributes to media to discuss topics related to universal basic income. We are really pleased to have her today, and I'll leave the floor to Aida. Uh, thank you, Alessandra, for the presentation. I'm so happy to be here to be able to explain to you what we're going to um, do about the pilot uh, project in Catalonia and what we think it's a, a good design in order to learn more things about the UBI effects. So um, if you don't mind, I will share a PowerPoint presentation so the information is more clear. Um, yep. Please go ahead, you can share. Okay. Are you able to see the presentation now? Yeah, okay. Yes. So I'm going to present uh, the Catalan case, which is the biggest basic income pilot project that it's been designed in Europe uh, until now, at least. I'm um, I'm part of the office that um, is part of the Catalan government, and we are um, uh, five professionals from different backgrounds um, focused on implement and designing the pilot project and designing how it's going to be implemented and, if possible, implementing it. So the contents of the presentations are going to be, as you see, a little bit of Spanish and Catalan context with a European perspective too. Um, a little bit of information about what does the UBI solve in terms of the conditional benefit systems. Um, I'm sure you know a lot about these uh, advantages, but I will. I think it's it's useful to present them. Also, a little bit of information about UBI pilots around the world, and then I will finish um, detailing the Catalan pilot, the interest outcomes that we're going to focus on, the design, and how are we how we are going to evaluate. It. Um, I don't see most of you, so if you have any questions, uh, just uh, speak and I will be happy to answer them. So um, a little bit about the economic context in Catalonia, but also in Spain and in the European Union. Um, the UBI proposal is not only important in, in contexts where poverty rates are high, but uh, it's uh, pointless to say that obviously the poverty rates are too high in our context, taking into account that um, there's a chronic um, poverty rate at 20% in Catalonia from 2013. It has not improved, even though um, we look at it after social transfers. And as you can see, the trend in Spain and in the European Union is more or less the same. Uh, it's quite stagnant since 2013, and it hasn't improved uh, from all those years. So it's another argument, a part of the theoretical ones that um, we have for the UBI, um, reasoning that we need an alternative because it's clear that what we are doing right now is not working because otherwise we wouldn't have a um, chronic poverty rate at 20%, right? Another way of looking at poverty rates is uh, looking at the um, severe material deprivation rate, which is um, in Spain and Catalonia, it's uh, more or less the same as it was 
10 years ago, uh, it's a little bit um, higher. And the European Union has slightly um, decreased the rate, but it's still quite high. Uh, quite high. Uh, if you think about the severe material deprivation rate, that includes uh, things like uh, not being able to go on a week holiday in a year, not being able to buy a washing machine and things like that, that are quite basic in order to be able to um, live a, a dignified life. Uh, another point of view of the socioeconomic context in Catalonia is thinking about the current um, conditional benefit system, right? So we have, uh, so you can um, take the, the right amount of um, perspective for the territory of Catalonia. And there's almost 8 million people living in Catalonia with an unemployment rate of almost 10%. Uh, as I said, 10% uh, people living under poverty risk uh, threshold. And the current situation with some conditional benefits, it's not as good as it should be. For example, I chose to focus on the two main uh, conditional benefits that we have here in Catalonia. The IMV, Ingreso Minimo Vital, it's a... Um, it's a conditional benefit that it's from the Spanish government and the RGC, the Renda Garantida de Ciudadanía, it's a Catalan social uh, conditional benefit. So just to put you into perspective, the amount for a single adult on the IMV should be, uh, would be 565 euros a month and the RGC would be 615 euros a month. And they're not a high amount, but they are even um, the amounts are even lower. If you think about what the poverty threshold in Spain is for a single adult, it's almost 100 years a month. So it's uh, quite clear that the amount of the conditional benefits, it's not high enough. Uh, just thinking about the the quantity of money that the, they are giving, but if we think about the poverty. The, the, the amount of people in living under the poverty threshold in Catalonia that actually receive one of those um, conditional benefits, it's so, so low. For example, the IMV is only 3% and the RGC is only 11%. So taking this into account that um, it's not getting to uh, all the people that need them. And even though uh, when they arrive, it's not um, uh, an amount of money high enough in order to uh, live uh, above the poverty threshold, it's clear that uh, Catalonia needs an alternative. And even though the basic income, um, it's not the only solution that should be implemented in order to change all of these socioeconomic uh, items that we live with, it's one of the of the solutions that we that we may be thinking about if we want something to change. So um, I will not bother a lot with this uh, because obviously you know very well what the universal basic income is, but just to um, recapitulate, recapitulate, it's an individual and conditional universal and regular um, stipend given, given it uh, monthly. So the problems that it avoids are mainly um, Obviously, I will not tackle the main theoretical and philosophical arguments for the UBI, which uh, from the Office uh, of the Pilot Project in the Qatar government, we're very aware of, and we think about it from a Republican progressive way of thinking on the UBI. But if we think only about the technical advantages or disadvantages that would solve the UBI about the uh, conditional benefits that we live we live with in the actual system, uh, we would be talking about the over-specification, the stigmatization of people that apply and have to apply to conditional benefits, also are really, um, are really well-spoken um, item about a social systems right now are, is the poverty trap, which is the, 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 the thing, the, the, 
situation when some people uh, do not have uh, an incentive to leave the, the benefit in order to enter the labor market because the labor market is not stable and the, and the benefit is quite stable once they have gained it. So they are, they are left to be in the poverty sphere uh, for, a, for a long time. Also, a, a really high problem is the non-take-up situation because a lot of people uh, do not even apply for the benefits that they have, the, where, even though when they meet all the criteria, right? And uh, all taken into account, um, leaves the situation that uh, the actual system is not effective or efficient in order to eliminate the poverty rates and in order to arrive to the people that need them, that need the benefits. So the UBI uh, has been around uh, internationally, um, especially since the 70s. There have been some experiences and pilot projects in Canada, the US, Namibia, Guinea, India, Finland, and so many countries. And the, most, the majority of pilots have been RCTs, which are randomized controlled trials. That's when you get a target population and you randomize the participants that will participate in the pilot project, and you randomize some other group uh, uh, where you you get a treatment group and a control group. So it means that since you have chosen them uh, randomly, they are equal, but different only in the sense that they will receive the UBI or not receive it. So the difference that we can see from between the two groups would be attached to the, the causality of the having received the UBI. Um, the majority of pilot projects that have been um, um, done around the world from the since the 70s have been focusing on observing the individual effects mostly but not so many projects have been focused on what happens in a community and aggregate level when when the ubi is given or they have not been focusing on giving a really high uh, or basic amount of money which is what the ubi intends to right it has to be basic in order to fulfill the basic material needs and and also, they have not focused enough on universality. They have focused on unconditionality and individuality. So all taken into account, um, we, um, we designed a pilot project that uh, it's quite challenging because of the, of the size and because of the amount of outcomes that we want to observe. We want to observe the universality. We want to observe what happens at the household level effects. So it means also gender effects and um, rela relationships between the household. So the main items of the pilot plans are, as you see, the amount, the target population, the length, and the sample. So the amount, we wanted the amount of money to be quite, uh, really basic, so we chose to it being close to the poverty threshold in Spain. So for each adult, the amount of money that we will be giving in the pilot project in Catalonia will be 800 euros a month. And for underage people will be 300 euros a month. The target population, well, so differently from other pilot projects that that's have, pilot projects that have been conducted around the world that have been focusing on maybe, um, uh, unemployed people or really poor people or like collectives and very specific people. We wanted it to be close uh, to the universal way of thinking about the basic income. So we said, okay, let's randomize the sample for everyone. And the only exclusion criteria will be uh, excluding the 10% te highest incomes. Why do we want to exclude this 10% highest incomes? It's because the proposal that is that is defended by the Catalan office at the government, um, also coming from different simulations that have been made at the University of Barcelona by Jordi Arcarons and Luis Torrens, defends that uh, in order to implement um, a UBI in Catalonia, uh, progressive tax reform should be uh, preceding it. So with this tax reform, at least 
at least the 10 highest incomes wouldn't get a net gain from the UEI. So that's why it didn't make sense for us to give them the money in the pilot project because in, the, in a hypothetical public policy implemented, um, they wouldn't be receiving a gain UBI. So that's the reason, uh, that's the reason that we uh, make this exclusion, but that's the only exclusion we have. The length would be two years starting first trimester of 2023. That was the uh, theoretical approach. Um, I will tell you later, but there have been some political um, developments that we didn't expect and we will have to start it later, but the original idea is for it to last two years. And the last thing is the sample. It's, as I said at the beginning, it's the biggest pilot project in Europe. It will be um, involving 5,000 people receiving the UBI, but it will involve in total 10,000 people because we will need another extra 5,000 people participating in the uh, evaluation activities of the project, but not receiving the UBI. So they will be the control group and the treatment group will be these 5,000 people receiving the UBI. So these 5,000 people will be separated into a kind of different designs but they will be part of the same pilot project. Why do we want to separate the sample into two? Because we want to test what happens uh, with universality, right? What happens with an entire community of people receives the UBI uh, individually. And we want to test also what happens at a universal level. So we want to do, have a randomized sample uh, taking into account the entire territory and population of Catalonia. So that's why the municipalities um, on the one hand to in order to learn about the universality part of the proposal and the RCT in order to learn about the, the, the implementation of an entire uh, of, of the policy in, an, in the entirety of the territory of Catalonia. So more into, uh, more into detail, these 5,000 people will, will receive the UBI, right? So what I just explained is more detailed here because uh, I can understand it's not uh, um, such a clear design at the, first, at the first glance, but we believe it's a really good design in order to learn about so many different levels of understanding, like individual uh, household level, and on the other hand, aggregate and community level. So um, the first, the first half of the sample, 2,500 people, will be uh, randomly chosen from the entirety of the territory territory of Catalonia. But another innovative item in the methodology that we will be using is that the randomization unit will not be the individual, but it will be the household. So we will choose around. 1,000 households in Catalonia that will include more or less uh, 2,500 people living there. And from all the households that we will be choosing randomly, we will give the UBI individually to every person registered in those 1,000 households. And we will do the same to people not receiving the UBI. So we get what, uh, what I said before, right? The treatment group and the control group. And the other half of the sample will be a um, saturation study uh, taking place at two municipalities. Uh, we will have two municipalities summing uh, more or less 2,500 people between the two of them. We know that they are not really big municipalities, but I just take into account that it's a pilot project. We have budget, budget limitations, but uh, it's not so bad in the sense that municipalities with this uh, amount of inhabitants in Catalonia represent 40% of population in Catalonia and almost 80% of the municipalities in Catalonia. So we will be able not to say a lot what would happen, for example, in Barcelona, if the OBI was implemented, right? But we will be um, able to extrapolate the findings that, we've, that we have at the saturation study to 800 municipalities in Catalonia. So that's not, uh, that's not little to say. And another innovative uh, thing about the methodology in this part of the pilot project will be how we control, how we form the control group to, in order to compare, right, to assess the exact impact and causality from the pilot project. So because there's only two municipalities that will be treated from a total of 947 municipalities that exist in Catalan territory, 
we're not able to choose randomly two municipalities and con just compare them. So we will have to use a synthetic control methodology, which is um, being uh, developed by, by an MIT um, professor, professor and um, and yeah, if you want to know more about this particular part of the methodology, I will, have, I will be happy to send to you uh, um, a document that explains in, in quite detail. And just to finish the presentation, um, I'm sure that there may be some questions, but I will be happy to answer them. Um, but the, yeah, the, the end of the presentation will be like, how are we going to evaluate this pilot project, right? We have a really challenging design. We have a um, quite complex design. But the thing about this design actually is that it was designed from the beginning thinking about it being able to be evaluated. So we started to uh, work with IVALO, which is the Institute, Catalan Institute for Public Policy Evaluation from the very beginning. And they assessed us and, and, and helped us to um, tackle some design issues in order for them to be able to evaluate it once the pilot project is finished. And we will be doing an implementation evaluation and an impact evaluation. We are using quantitative and also qualitative methodology. Um, and we are really focused on putting more importance in this set, in this quite, mm, quite new current uh, called the evidence-based policies. We believe in the UBI, but we also believe that the UBI debate in the political arena should be fulfilled with evidences that we only can have by doing a pilot project. So if you want any more information, you can you can get, you can go to rendabasica.gencat.cat or I can send to you more more materials um, for the methodology and the design that we have in Spanish, Catalan and also English. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I hope you you found this interesting and challenging because we are very eager to start the implementation of the pilot project. Thank you so much. Uh, the presentation, I think, uh, I speak for everyone, was really interesting and, and uh, we all learned so much. So I opened the floor for questions. Um, you can just open your mic and ask questions or Reinhard, you raise your hand. Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank Aida for this really clear and very good presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I have a, I, I want to keep it short. I have a few questions. One is what is your poverty definition? because there are quite a few around. So when you showed this slide with a 20%, how is poverty defined? These two social security payments, do I understand one is for Catalonia and the other one is for Spain, for the rest of Spain? Um, or is there an overlap that uh, one can choose or is selected? And uh, the third one is about the funding of the intervention. One of the problems with these type of trials is that they are very expensive. And so who is actually providing the considerable funds? And my final point is more sort of to the evaluation. Um, you mentioned qualitative methodology, and I noticed in many research reports, there is this focus on RCTs nowadays, which I, I mean, there is some, a lot of criticism of RCTs. Uh, I'm more a fan of realist evaluation, uh, where one actually explores the mechanism, what is actually happening, why people, how people choose it. You mentioned qualitative methodology, and I just wanted to know what uh, is the sort of approach in the qualitative approach. Is it a sort of realist approach to try and understand the mechanism? And uh, linked to that, this Catalan Policy Institute, is it independent from the government of Catalan or is it a sort of part of the uh, Catalan government, which could then raise questions about bias or influence, political influence on the evaluation? Thank you. Sorry for all these long questions. Thank you for the questions. Maybe I forget some of them, but you can just uh, get into them again. So the the poverty definition that we use, and it's quite um, um, broadly used, is the um, 
the poverty threshold is put on the 60% of the e median income okay. in, in Catalonia or Spain or the territory you're choosing. About the, the two social benefits that I mentioned, the IMV, which is for, uh, from the Spanish government and the RGC, which is from the Catalan government. Um, yes, indeed, they are complementary, but the main social benefit in Catalonia is the Catalan one. So the IMV is only like a compliment uh, for families that are um, way more vulnerable. They get an extra 200 euros or whatever. But an important thing to mention about these uh, social conditional benefits is that they are targeted to the family. So um, when you think about it and you um, divide the amount of money that a family of two adults and two underage uh, people receive is not it's not near the poverty threshold even so hmm. yeah and about the in catalan institute for public policy evaluation it's indeed part of the it's participated by the government but it's not only from the government so it's uh, a consortium between the economic department at the catalan government the universitat pompeu fabra from barcelona and and another uh, diputació de barcelona which is like another regional level in Catalonia. The thing about this Catalan Institute is that I don't think anyone would mm, think that there's a bias there because it has been always very academic, uh, academ uh, academ academically focused. And what they do is purely evaluations on a quantitative basis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next question by Ulrich. Yeah, I just want to know uh, what kind of um, impact you're going to evaluate the readiness to join labor market, mm. uh, health, uh, happiness index, um, the ecological footprint, uh, civil engagement. Uh, what is your yeah. focus? All, all of the above. <laughs> you have mentioned uh, so many outcomes that we are focusing on. On the individual basis, we are going to focus on um, how people spend their money in terms of uh, do they get more education do they leave the labor market in order to study or in order to uh, be able to get a better paid um, job or things like that also we are really focusing on the household level so we are including questions on the service that we will be passing through the implementation of the project about gender inequalities distribution of power distribution of um, household tasks and and well kind of items like that and also on the aggregate or community level we will focus on the community participation, uh, civil engagement, and so on. So we will tackle all of these um, outcomes from the service, but also we are very happy to know that we are going to be able to uh, access the administrative registers of individual participants. That means we will be able to know their data on education, on health, and and on, so, on the use of social services. So for example, with health, we are very, very interested on mental health issues, not so much on the kind of traditional physical health, like in some underdeveloped countries where pilot projects were taken and they, they studied a lot on nutritional differences before and after the implementation of the plan. But we think that in developed countries, uh, it, should not make that much of a difference, but we will focus more on the mental health um, area of the of health. So that's like a summary. But as I said before, I will send to Alessandra the the uh, design report and also the methodological report, so you will be able to understand more into detail of all of these um, aspects of the plan. Yes, we will make sure to disseminate it. Um, next question, Antonis. Yeah, uh, 
Thank you very much from my side as well for, for the brilliant presentation. I, I finally understood the details of the pilot and for the willingness to, to share the details you just mentioned. My question has to do more with um, uh, if you, whether you include other studies or will you include other studies from other pilots and experiments in your, uh, in your report? Uh, f from experiments run in other countries to experiments in Europe mm. or indeed in Spain, like the mm. MINCAM experiment that was before. Will you use any such material yeah. for a comparative analysis? Um, on the evaluation process, it's not really thought because we want to, to focus on the impact evaluation itself from the pilot project, but uh, we don't discard a future maybe literature review uh, taking into account the pilot project that we're going to implement. But for now on, the Catalan Institute for Public Policy Evaluation uh, did uh, that they have uh, also available, I will send it to you too. They have a literature review of the pilot projects that they and we have been uh, studying in order to 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 perfect the the pilot project uh, that we are design that we designed, and also an important thing that we think it's um, interesting is that since we didn't want this survey in the questionnaire to be long too long in order that to people being able to finish it, uh, what we um, what we used as one of the criteria in order to eliminate some of the questions was to know to look at different pilot projects that could be similar to the Catalan context, like I don't know um, Finland, for example, or some of them in the U.S., and and say okay, these individual outcomes are really well proved that. Um, I mean, the effects are this and that, so we didn't find it so interesting to include them. So we are including in the project uh, most of the outcomes that are not really well, uh, not really spoken about on the literature, or that we don't have empirical evidence uh, supporting what the hypotheses are around them. So that, that's a way that we have thought about the other pri uh, projects. Thank you. Next question from Simon. Mm, hello. Um, I wanted to I wanted to ask um, on the like the people who receive the money are split to two groups, uh, the municipalities and the randomly chosen ones. And well, I'm much more excited about uh, the group of municipalities, like what they will do in a whole neighborhood. Um, and I was thinking it's uh, like that that was the original idea and that all 5000 people will be from municipalities and um, so why it's now different um yeah the thing about um, the change of mind that we had is because of two main things the first thing be being that um if we only focused on a municipality level we would have um we would have been able to choose slightly biggest municipalities, but we would not be able to say what happens if what would happen in Catalonia if a UBI was implemented, right? Because uh, in the end, um, in a very optimistic way, you would be looking at what happens in a 5,000 inhabitants municipality. So we wanted to know also what happens with with the entire of Catalonia. So we wanted to extrapolate the effects on Catalonia. That's why we implement the RCT around the entirety of the territory. So we will get individual, at least individual and household effects that we can say that are for the Catalan territory entirely. And another reason is that um, the way that we are going to evaluate the municipality part of the project is quite innovative. It's very new. And even though we are very, we strongly um, think that it's going to be evaluated in a really good way, we cannot be so sure. And we didn't want to risk, to risk the entirety of the pilot project in just uh, one innovative methodology. So since we know that the RCT is really well uh, proved and has been used uh, almost everywhere, 
faster. We knew that that part of the experiment would go well. We knew that the evalu evaluation would be going well. So we didn't want to risk the entirety of the project into one innovative methodology. So that way we get community effects, also individual effects that we can extrapolate to the entirety of the of Catalonia. And also we are we, we don't risk it all into one um, methodology. Okay. Uh, and can I have one more question? Um, if I want to like see and get some news from the about the, the pilot program, like um, should I should I watch uh, the Twitter account or or are there some yeah, other channel, we, channels? We share almost everything on the Twitter account, but um, yeah, uh, if you look at the website from the Catalan government, uh, you can find the actual documents uploaded and. All of them are in English, so I would go there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I will. Um, I will write at the chat the again the the website. Okay, so yeah, I was about to ask you that, please. Uh -huh. And while you do that, is there? Uh, yes, there is another question from Marlies, and it will be our last question. So, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, um, if the parliament approves the funding next year, will the funding then be secure for two years or will it just be one year and will you then need another approval? Um, that's a really good question. Um, the budgets are approved yearly. So in a way we would be securing only one year, theoretically speaking, but we know that there's a high political cost if you finish something that has already started uh, in the sense that you cannot go on the news being the party that stopped a pilot project that was already taking place. So we are really, uh, we, we strongly believe that it, once it's started, it will be, it will be finished at least for one and a half years, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's something that the political um arena has to discuss we are the office that we have like the technical approach to the pilot project we present it as we think it's best but their decisions are are theirs as i said before maybe the situation changes after the municipal and local elections so we'll see because likely the barcelona city council will be formed by a coalition so maybe one of those parties from the coalition are the ones that voted against in the parliament for the pilot project. So um, we have something to be negotiated with. Thank you. Um, thank you, Aida, for this really interesting presentation. Um, we thank you all for inviting me. And I, I, Alessandra, as I said, I will send to you all the all the material in case you want to take a look at it. Yes, we will definitely disseminate them. And thank you again. And I wish you well uh, for all of this pilot. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Good luck to you too.